On the 15th of March, the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, delivered his Spring 23 budget announcement. The Chancellor was keen for the 23 budget to be billed as a budget for growth, seeking to die, tie the measures announced into one of his four pillars of an industrial strategy, those being enterprise, employment, education and everywhere. Over the next few slides, I will look to explore some of the recent announced changes and what impact they may have for entrepreneurial businesses and their owners. Specifically, we will look at confirmation of the increase in headline rate of corporation tax, the new scheme of full expensing for first certain capital expenditure for companies. In addition to R&D changes previously announced, an increase in the rate for R&D intensive SMEs, the announced changes in the pension tax regime, and a recap on other changes taking effect in 23 and 24. As previously announced before the spring budget, the headline rate of corporation tax will increase from 19% to 25% for those companies whose profits are above £250,000. This new rate will apply from the 1st of April 2023. Companies with profits less than £50,000 will continue to pay corporation tax at 19%. Where profits are between £50,000 and £250,000, the marginal rate of CT becomes 26.5%. These rates are divided by the number of associated companies, i.e. those companies under common control. Where a company has profits above £1.5 million, divided by the number of companies under common control, Tax will be due in quarterly instalments. For those below that threshold, the corporation tax is due nine months and one day after the year end. The government continues to encourage companies to invest. On the 31st of March 2023, the current super deductions for capital expenditure come to an end. They provide an enhanced deduction of up to 130% in qualifying capital expenditure on new assets. To continue to encourage investment, as announced in the spring budget, the super deduction has been replaced with a full expense in relief from 1st of April 2023. From 1st of April 23 to the 31st of March 26, companies will claim 100% first year allowance on new qualifying plant machinery investments. A 50% first year allowance will be available to be claimed on expenditure on new special rate assets including long-life assets. The ongoing relief on special rate assets and long-life assets will then continue to be at 6% writing down allowance after the 50% has been claimed. There will be no cap on the level of qualifying expenditure that is eligible for these reliefs. The current annual investment allowance of 1 million will remain in place alongside the new full expensing reliefs. These savings for businesses are estimated by government to be worth an average of nine million nine billion pounds per annum. So how will the full expensing work? In order to qualify for the 100% first year allowance, determined by the Chancellor as the full expensing, an asset must be a main rate pool allow asset. Plant and machinery that may qualify for full expensing includes, but is not limited to, Machines such as computers, printers, lathes and planers, office equipment such as desks and chairs, vehicles such as vans, lorries and tractors, but not cars, warehousing equipment such as forklift trucks, pallet trucks, shelving and stackers, tools such as ladders and drills, construction equipment such as excavators, compactors and bulldozers, some fixtures such as kitchen and bathroom fittings and fire alarm systems in non-residential properties. The equipment must be purchased for use in a trade in a company and must not be bought to lease to a third party. Further, the full expense and relief and the 50% first year allowance on special rate assets are only available to companies. Unincorporated businesses cannot claim them. Annual investment allowances are, well, however, available to both companies and to unincorporated businesses. What happens if you sell an asset on which you claimed the full expensing reliefs? If you dispose of a capital item on which you have claimed full expensing relief, the proceeds of disposal will give rise to a balancing charge 
that will add to the taxable profit of the, the year of the disposal. Where the 50% first year allowance has been claimed on a special rate asset, 50% of the balance in charge will be added to the taxable profit in the year of the disposal, and the other 50% will be taken to the special rate asset pool. R&D tax reliefs. Whilst the government continues to recognise the significant part that R&D tax credits have to play in promoting innovation in the UK, today's announcement of an increase in the R&D tax credit rate available to R&D intensive loss-making SMEs will be seen as bittersweet by many SMEs. Whilst the increased rate of 27% represents an improvement on the previously announced new rates for the expenditure incurred on or after the 1st of April 2023, the rate is still lower than the current rate of benefit applying up to the 31st of March 23. The current effective credit rates for expenditure incurred pre 1st of April 23 are 24.7% for profit making SMEs and up to 33.35% for loss making SMEs. It was announced during the autumn statement that these effective rates would be lowered to between 16.34% and 22.79% for profit-making SMEs, depending on the level of profit, and to a maximum of 18.6% for loss-making SMEs. For R&D intensive loss-making SMEs, where the qualifying R&D expenditure makes up at least 40% of the total expenditure, the credit rate will now increase for, from the maximum proposed rate of 18.6% to a maximum rate of 27%. Whilst the government has sought to reduce the beneficial rates available to SME companies undertaking R&D, they have increased the credit rates available under the R&D expenditure credit regime, a move which may signal a shift towards combining the R&D schemes into one in the future. This is something which is currently being debated. The net R&D expenditure credit rates are due to, the, to increase from 10.53% to between 14.7% and 16.2%, depending on the level of profit or loss made by the company for expenditure incurred from 1st of April 23. As previously announced, as well as changes to the rates, there are also upcoming changes to the qualifying cost categories and to the claims and to the claim disclosure and submission procedures. For accounting periods beginning on or after the 1st of April 23, cloud computing and data storage costs will be allowable for R&D tax reliefs. Pure mathematics research will now also qualify under the, tax, under the schemes. There was due to be a restriction coming into place for certain overseas costs, as the government seeks to concentrate the benefit of R&T tax credit schemes in the UK. However, this restriction has been delayed to 1st of April 24. In terms of the claims submission process, claims will need to be made digitally from the 1st of August 2023, and for any claims made for accounting periods starting on or after the 1st of April 2023 that are filed before then. A new HMRC form will need to be completed, which sets out greater detail than is currently required, and will include the R&D agent name and the name of the company officer approving the claim. A pre-notification form will also have to be completed where an R&D claim has not been submitted in any of the company's previous three periods. Pension tax reform. Senior management and company shareholders will also be interested in the pension tax reforms announced in the 23 spring budget. These measures are announced to encourage individuals to stay in employment longer or return to work if already retired. From 6 of April 23, there is to be an increase in the amount you can contribute to your pension scheme annually tax free. This will be increased up to £60,000 up from a previous limit of £40,000. The lifetime allowance on amounts that can build up in your pension fund will from the 6th of April 23 be uncapped. Previously, this was capped at £1 million. Finally, for those who previously accessed their defined contribution pension savings, you will be able to contribute up to £10,000 to your pension tax free, up from 4K previously. Remuneration plans incorporated pension payments should be reviewed. 
with your independent financial advisor to ensure that you are taking advantage of these new allowances where applicable. Recognise the importance the small business has to the UK economy, the Chancellor also announced some simplifications in the tax regime to cut through some of that red tape. For those who have introduced an enterprise management incentive share scheme for key employees, the administrative burden relating to this scheme will be relaxed from April 23. Where you have a tax agent acting on your behalf, tax agents will now be able to support small businesses in payrolling benefits. Further, there were some also announcements to help relax the import and export process for small business. Investment zones. Again, with the viewpoint of fueling the economy, the Chancellor announced that the introduction of new investment zones. There are to be 12 situated across the UK, and these are designed to encourage innovation and growth with access to an £80 million fund. Once designated, Investment zones will benefit from a package of tax reliefs, including stamp duty land tax reliefs, enhanced capital allowances for plant and machinery, enhanced structure and building allowances, and secondary class one national insurance contribution relief. Creative industry tax reliefs. The importance of the creative industry sector was also highlighted in the Chancellor's spring budget. There is to be a reform of the existing creative tax reliefs applicable to the film, TV, animation and video game sectors. Moving to a credit regime more akin to the R&D expenditure credit regime. The creative sector reliefs will range from 34% to 39% of eligible expenditure. Also announced today were changes extending the higher rates of theatre, orchestral and museum tax reliefs. Finally, there were some announcements applicable to large companies, which I have just highlighted here. I have also listed some previously announced changes that will take effect in the 23-24 financial year. Transfer pricing. For, account for accounting periods beginning on or after the 1st of April 2023, businesses operating in the UK, which are part of a large multinational enterprise, which comprises global revenues of more than 750 million euros, are required to prepare transfer pricing documentation, namely a master file and a local file in accordance with the OECD transfer pricing guidelines. Global minimum tax. The government will legislate in the Spring Finance Bill 2023 to introduce a multinational top-up tax, which will require large UK headquartered multinational groups to pay a top-up tax where their operations in a foreign jurisdiction have an effective tax rate of less than 15%. This will also bring a requirement of those operating exclusively in the, exclusively in the UK to pay up a top-up tax where the UK operations have an effective tax rate of less than 15%. These changes will apply to large groups, again with over 750 million global revenues, and will take effect in relation to accounting periods beginning on or after the 31st of December 23. For those entities who have sufficient enough interest expense to fall within the corporate interest restriction regimes, typically those with interest expenses in excess of 2 million, there will be there were a number of announcements today to address various issues with this regime. Finally, the government will legislate in the Spring Finance Bill 2023 for the electricity generators levy. I hope you found that informative and if you've got any questions, please do follow up with me. My details are on this slide. Thank you for listening.